From the Voyager spacecraft to the space shuttle missions, NASA has a history that is pretty remarkable in terms of space exploration. In this video, we will continue to look at some of the greatest achievements that NASA has made throughout its history. So let's talk about that. Welcome to the second video in a three-part series going over some of NASA's greatest accomplishments throughout its history. Now, how this series is working is we go year by year and recognizing one of the biggest events that NASA has achieved throughout that time frame. And in the first video, we go from 1958, or the beginning of NASA, all the way through the Apollo era, reaching up to 1977, with some of the very first space shuttle testing. And if you haven't already seen that video, I highly recommend you go and check that out. But in this video, we will be continuing on going from 1978 all the way to the year 2000, seeing what major accomplishments happened during that time frame and what NASA has been able to achieve. So with all that being said, let's get started in 1978. In December, the Pioneer Venus Orbiter reached its destination which you can probably guess from the name, it was able to enter orbit around Earth's sister planet, Venus. Now, something that's really important to note is that this was the first spacecraft from NASA to enter orbit around Venus. And this is so important because the Pioneer Venus Orbiter mission was able to look through Venus's thick atmosphere to try and understand more about the planet's surface. And this is something that's very challenging to do from here on Earth. Therefore, it was a major accomplishment for the year 1978. But with that being said, let's go into 1979. Well, during this year, both Voyager 1 and 2 would perform flybys of the gas giant Jupiter, not only helping us understand more about the planet itself, but also sending some critical data about the Galilean moons, taking remarkable images of these ocean and volcanic worlds. The next year, in November of 1980, Voyager 1 would perform a flyby of the gas giant Saturn. It would take remarkable images of the ringed planet and help us understand more about the complex nature that exists beyond the asteroid belt. Another major and historical event for NASA would occur in April of 1981, being the first space shuttle launch, STS-1. Now, this specific space shuttle was Columbia, and the flight was primarily a flight test, but it did in fact have two crew members on board. The entire mission lasted just over two days in space, but if you look at the pictures, you might notice something a little bit different about this launch to some of the other missions. In fact, the external fuel tank is painted white and isn't the iconic orange. A fun fact about the orbiter is that the very first two space shuttle launches had a white external tank. And the reason for this is because they thought there might be an issue with ultraviolet radiation in terms of the launch itself. However, they later found out that this wasn't an issue, and by removing the paint, they were able to save 272 kilograms of the vehicle itself. Another major milestone would happen the following year, in November of 1982, when again, the Columbia Orbiter would launch and fly mission STS-5, being the first operational flight of the space shuttle program. This mission specifically sent two communication satellites to orbit with a crew of four astronauts on board. The following year, in June of 1983, another historic event would occur, where Space Shuttle Challenger would fly STS-7, where Sally Ride became the first American woman to fly into space. The crew deployed two satellites as a part of this mission, and the entire thing lasted just over six days. Now, the space shuttle will continue to show its remarkable capabilities in the following year, April of 1984, where the mission STS-41C flew Space Shuttle Challenger, being the first on-orbit repair mission, where the orbiter rendezvoused with a satellite called the Solar Maximum Mission, where astronaut Nelson, George Nelson, not Administrator Bill Nelson, would fly the MMU, or essentially his spacesuit, to go and reach the satellite. They then connected back up with the space shuttle, and over the course of a few days, the crew repaired some of the avionics on board the satellite to help it function. Now, by looking at these pictures, just seeing an astronaut floating out in space traveling to another satellite that needs repairs is truly remarkable. It really showed the capability of the space shuttle program. And a fun fact about this specific mission is that there is a student experiment on board that actually included honeybees. They were testing to see whether or not they could actually make honeycombs in low gravity environments. And it turns out they can. 
So that's just a fun fact about STS-41C. But let's go on to the next year. In August of 1985, Space Shuttle Atlantis took its first flight on STS-51J. This mission took two communication satellites for the Department of Defense to orbit. In January of 1986, Voyager 2 would perform a flyby of the planet Uranus, taking pictures closer to the distant planet than ever before. Now during this flyby, Voyager 2 detected 11 new moons around the planet, and to this date, Voyager 2 is the only spacecraft to ever visit Uranus. Now over the next year or so, there would be quite a delay to NASA. If you're familiar with the history of NASA, 1986 was also the year of the Challenger disaster. Therefore, the next one to two years going into 1987 would primarily focus on internal reviews within the agency. Therefore, the next major accomplishment for NASA would be the return to flight for space shuttle. In this case, Orbiter Discovery flew in September of 1988, this being the 26th mission of the space shuttle program. Now during this time frame, the Voyager 2 spacecraft would continue to travel outwards in our solar system. And in August of 1989, it would perform a flyby of the planet Neptune. Now Neptune, much like Uranus, has never had a spacecraft fly by it other than Voyager 2. Therefore, it took incredible images as it got close to the planet also took pictures of some of the larger moons and identified six new moons around Neptune, which is truly remarkable. Hopefully in the near future, we'll have more missions going to some of these outermost planets. But Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 were true staples in exploration of our solar system. Now, speaking of exploration of our solar system, we can go into August of 1990, where the Magellan space probe entered orbit around the planet Venus. Now, Magellan used microwave antennas to look through Venus's thick atmosphere and study the surface of the planet. Now, although this mission is over 30 years old as of creating this video, it created what is currently the best map of Venus's surface to date, and is also the most recent mission NASA has sent to specifically explore our sister planet. Now, for some of you major space history buffs, you might notice there was another pretty important object launched during this year as well, but I'll get back to that very shortly. So let's continue going into April of 1991, where Space Shuttle Atlantis would fly STS-37, which took the Compton Gamma Ray Observatory to space. Now this satellite observed from the name Gamma Rays and X-Rays, part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and this mission helped us explore these gamma ray bursts and survey galactic center to understand some of these more dynamic structures that happen in astronomy or astrophysics. Then in May of 1992, the maiden flight of Space Shuttle Endeavour took place, taking a crew of seven astronauts to orbit. The mission included rendezvousing with the communication satellite that was in the wrong orbit due to a malfunction with its upper stage. The mission gave it a new stage to send it from LEO to GEO, or geostationary orbit. Now I might be mistaken here, and you can let me know in the comments if I'm incorrect, but I believe this is the first and only time where three astronauts were on a spacewalk at once. Any other point in time where there's been a spacewalk would include one or two astronauts, whether it be from a space station or even some of the earliest tests in the 1960s. However, this specific mission had three astronauts outside of shuttle at once, which is pretty remarkable. So to continue with some of the impressive feats of space shuttle and the space shuttle astronauts, let's go into 1993 where in December, Space Shuttle Endeavour flew STS-61 to service the Hubble Space Telescope, where in 1990, when the Hubble Space Telescope was launched, and that's what I was referring to a little bit earlier, there was a problem with the mirror that made the observations out of focus. The mission is considered to be one of the most complex shuttle missions throughout the program's history, taking 11 days and including five different spacewalks, which totaled in about 35 hours on EVA. Here is an image showing the difference before and after the servicing mission, so we can see how critical this mission was to the success of Hubble Space Telescope. In February of 1994, Space Shuttle Discovery would fly STS-60, which included a crew of six, five astronauts, and Sergei Krikalov, a Russian cosmonaut. Now this flight was the first time an American vehicle flew a Russian cosmonaut to space. This flight was one of the first that marked a collaboration or an international collaboration in space, which would later lead to the development of the International Space Station. 
In December of 1995, Galileo became the first spacecraft to orbit the gas giant Jupiter. Now, I know I've mentioned a few missions that have performed flybys of Jupiter. However, entering orbit is a completely different challenge with incredible benefits. If we can orbit a planet, that means we can stay there for much longer, taking a lot more pictures and studying various aspects of the planet itself and also its very interesting moons. In fact, many of the findings that have come from the Galileo mission laid the groundwork or the framework for what we understand about some of these planets or moons beyond the asteroid belt. It's truly fascinating what Galileo was able to show us. Over the time frame from 1995 to 1998, the international collaboration between the United States and Russia continued to grow through the shuttle Mir program. Now, if you aren't familiar, Mir was Russia's space station at the time, where seven shuttle expeditions sent American astronauts to the Mir station. Now, these astronauts were essentially trained to operate not only to the space shuttle, but also the Soyuz vehicle and the Mir station itself, and having an ability to perform EVAs of the space station. Therefore, this was a remarkable international collaboration between these two nations. In July of 1977, the Mars Pathfinder mission landed on the surface of the Red Planet. At the time, this mission was the first successful landing on Mars in 20 years. Mars Pathfinder is most commonly known for its companion, Sojourner, the first American rover on Mars. Now, although Sojourner is pretty small compared to some of the rovers we see today, it was a major success in proving the use of robotic vehicles to traverse across Mars. And much like ingenuity is to perseverance today, Sojourner showed us that rovers can really allow us to explore a lot more about the Red Planet. Space Shuttle Endeavour flew the Unity node into low Earth orbit. There, the crew rendezvoused with the Ziara module, being the first components of the International Space Station. In May of 1999, the Space Shuttle Columbia flew the Chandra X-ray Observatory to Earth orbit. From the name of the mission, you can probably guess that it's exploring the X-ray range of the electromagnetic spectrum. The telescope is able to study the structure of our universe by observing high-energy environments like black holes, quasars, supernovas, and more. The Chandra X-ray Observatory, or Observer, is still in operation today. And the last year we'll include in this video is 2000, where in November, Expedition 1 began on the International Space Station, including a crew of two cosmonauts and one astronaut. The three would begin the first long-duration stay on the ISS, marking the beginning of the longest operational crewed vehicle to date. Now, as of filming this video, the International Space Station has been continuously crewed since November 2nd of 2000. Therefore, if you or if you know someone that was born after November 2nd of the year 2000, then that means that they have lived their entire lives with someone living in space, which I personally think is truly remarkable. So that's just something to keep in mind in terms of what humanity is capable of doing in terms of human space exploration. So let me provide a little bit of a recap. In the last video, we talked about how NASA went from essentially just its mere beginnings to landing astronauts on the surface of the moon. Whereas in this video, this is a 23 year time frame, which is primarily focused on the space shuttle. Now the space shuttle was a remarkable vehicle for space exploration at the time. It taught us so much about what it means to launch crewed missions into space and taking various types of spacecraft, whether it be communications payloads or even scientific missions that would explore our solar system. Many of these missions were launched on the space shuttle. It's pretty remarkable that over this 23 year time frame, and including the two year hiatus of the Challenger disaster, there were 100 space shuttle missions, which is pretty remarkable altogether. However, when we get to later into this time frame, into the mid to late 1990s, we start to see somewhat of a development of an international play essentially having this collaboration between the United States and Russia and more of an international effort in trying to put a presence in space, where once we reach the year 2000, we start to have the International Space Station. So it'll be interesting to see the next video where we go from 2001 all the way up into modern day, some of NASA's most recent achievements 
and how the International Space Station and the exploration of our solar system can play a role into the future of what NASA might look like. So with all that being said, if you have any questions about what I mentioned in this video, let me know in the comments below. If for some of these years you thought that maybe another event was a critical factor, also let me know below, because NASA does so much more than just the things that I mentioned here. But if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel. But with all that being said, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.